All right, well, here's what I've got. I, I put on my doghouse oil cooler and I used the uh, O-rings with uh, uh, some of the aviation Permatex and I put on my um, oil filler there. Now what I was gonna do today um, is I have uh, a piece that I'm putting on the full flow oil system. So you can see that I put the, the one on that has the elbow and I'm still gonna see if that's gonna work. Um, but what I have is now this one, which is the straightaway one, and that's gonna go on the CB performance uh, say I'll put this down like this so we can see it. What I'm going to do is just put some high temperature uh, thread seal on here. Like this. And we're going to go around this thing. I could put thread tape on there, but I don't know whether that would be better or worse. But And then what I'm going to do is just thread this into here. I'm going to use my wrench. I'm going to get this thing tightened down. Right here. And that, I already have the oil lines on my uh, bus connecting to the current motor. This will uh, the eight AN lines here will just go hook right into there. So, let's see what that looks like. Here's the CB oil pump, 30 millimeter. Comes out here, 8 AN. And here's the return. Comes in here, that's the swivel. I'm gonna see how that works. Now, when I put the plate on here, I have a feeling it's gonna interfere with that, but we're gonna see. And the other thing that I've done is I did the end play, and now I can't feel any end play now that I've torqued it down. So I think I'm going to redo it and just try to get the three thousandths end play. All right. Okay, well, I'm progressing on this engine. I've done a bunch of things wrong, which... Um, some people pointed out on the videos, and so I'm trying to correct this. Um, the first thing that I've done wrong is I've been allowing my rods to just mar up my um, mating surface here just a little bit, if you see that. So I'm going to be a lot more careful. I What I did is I took some very fine grit sandpaper, and I went on the top here just to make sure that it's perfectly flat. And now I'm going to be using barrel shims like this and so those barrel shims you know i've got to make sure that everything sits really really flat on there in order for the not to be oil leaks but yeah this was completely an oversight on my part that i allowed that to happen um, the next thing i i put one cylinder in place to do the deck height and what i did is um with two shims, a 0.9 and a 0.6, I uh, measured the deck height here. And what I did is, uh, it basically goes down one turn. So when I have the cylinder all the way up, and I, if I go one turn, Uh, it it's slightly more than one turn. I was uh, calculating as 1.1, and that makes my deck height uh, 0 0.069. And so I checked that. That gives me 9.1 compression. And so that was perfect. Um, you know, I can check it on all of them. Um, the, the other thing that I did is the uh, the, the end play. And I did this using this screw technique. I have a, a dial 
coming today, dial gauge, and so I'm just gonna double check it. Um, I think I gotta take this flywheel off anyway because I don't think I oiled my shims well enough. Um, and I have another main seal coming because I had to take it out once and put it back on. And so I'm not sure how well it's gonna seal. But basically, um, my end play measuring technique was to put the this screw in here, push it all the way in. And again, this is not the best way to do it compared to using a dial. And so I've got a magnetic dial gauge that I'm going to compare this with. But what I did is turn this flat surface here on the bell housing, I'll go up against it exactly the right spot, go firm, but don't move it at all. And then what I was doing is yanking back the yanking it back a little bit and taking my feeler gauge right here and then I would uh, find my I got a 0.05 and a 0.06 here so I would check 0.05 and it doesn't really want it doesn't want to go through but if you work it a little bit 0.05 will go through with a lot of friction. 0.06 will not go through. Um, so that's how I measured it so far. I'm going to just confirm it with the dial gauge and then possibly um, redo my seals and uh, leaving the same shims on there. Um, the other progress was I basically put on my oil pressure. I put on my um, cooling my doghouse cooler distributor course is on there. I swapped out this one. As you can see, this one was going to stick out like a full, almost like an inch more. And I think that was going to hit my tin. So what I did is I bought a two-piece where I can spin this on. And now I have my two fittings here. So I think that's going to work a lot better. So that's what I've got for, for right now. Thank <laughs> you.